Welcome to uh, this orientation uh, for 2023 semester two. Uh, let's begin with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We ask you, Lord, to lead us uh, into the riches of learning as we uh, uh, seek to uh, have, be orientated for this coming semester. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And under God, I acknowledge the traditional owners of the various lands on which we're meeting. Uh, we pay our respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging. So, my name is uh, Father Simon Waite. I'm uh, the academic dean of the college. Um, and uh, in a moment, I'll hand over to uh, Dr. Reverend Dr. Kevin Lenahan, who's the master of the college, um, and um, the uh, uh, and allow him to uh, introduce uh, the whole team that we have here. So over to you, Kevin. Okay, hello and welcome uh, everybody. Um, thanks very much for making the time to join us this evening. Um, nice to make some new friends with new people be beginning, but also some returning uh, friends to, to studies at the college. So we hope that uh, your uh, gathering tonight and the uh, introduction into studies again this semester is a uh, fairly um, well supported and enjoyable experience. The, the key thing out of tonight really is that you can put a few names on faces and make a few uh, points about who to contact when something goes wrong. You can't get access to the internet, to the learning management uh, uh, system, or you want to change a unit or whatever it might be. So that's really the key goal of this orientation session is to provide you uh, with some contacts uh, uh, about uh, who to contact uh, uh, to, to help your studies go as smoothly as possible in the semester uh, ahead. Um, uh, there's this um, this welcome uh, uh, slideshow that I'm that I've got in front of you there now um, is available to watch uh, uh, on the college website. So I won't go through a great deal of it, except perhaps just to um, I'll, I'll just take us forward to uh, this slide here, just to say that Catholic Theological College uh, is a college operated by the. Diocese of Victoria and Tasmania, plus seven religious uh, congregations. It was formed 50 years ago. So we're celebrating our 50th anniversary of theological studies. It was formed out of uh, 10 small religious houses who ran their own seminaries back in the 50s and 60s, many more uh, religious priests uh, in training in those days. And in order to um, share resources and provide the best theological education and best ministry training, and to widen that out, to open it up to lay people in the church, uh, to open it up to various forms of ministry in the church and to make it more public and more visible, not hidden away in seminaries um, out in the hills or, or, or out of town, but rather to make it more visible and available. The uh, the Archbishop of the time brought together um, the resources of the college and the, set out in our, in our constitution, the main goals of the college are to promote research and study in the theology and all its associated disciplines, um, a key a key element in Catholic studies is philosophy, uh, the theological disciplines, um, uh, all the different theological studies, church history, scripture, pastoral studies, religious education, canon law, spirituality, all these areas that make up the, the umbrella term of theology or divinity. A key task is the educating of ministries for the church, both ordained and lay ministries of the church. Part of the college's mission is to help uh, local churches proclaim the gospel. So we're here to be a resource for dioceses, for parishes, for religious orders and congregations, for school communities to build up capacity to proclaim the gospel in a critical, intelligent and public sort of facing way in Australia and to empower people, um, all, all members of, of, of all of people of Catholic community, people beyond the Catholic community to empower people for pastoral service uh, in, the, in the contemporary world. So we do that within the context of the University of Divinity, uh, what was formed formerly called the Melbourne College of Divinity, which was established in 1910 and is the, uh, the, 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 the longest, the oldest continuing uh, ecumenical educational venture in the world. It was established very much at the beginning of the ecumenical movement with the Edinburgh Conference in, in 1910. So the college today is made up, uh, the university today is made up of 12 colleges from different denominational backgrounds. There are two Catholic colleges, CTC and Yarra Theological 
College in Park in Box Hill here in Melbourne. There are colleges too from the Salvation Army. There are four colleges of the Anglican Church, the Lutheran College, there's a Baptist College, uh, the Coptic Orthodox uh, College, and uh, churches of, of, of Christ. So there's a, there's a rich ecumenical environment. And that was very much part of the founding vision of Catholic Theological was to participate in this ecumenical venture as an upshot 50 years ago in the in the in the implementation of the second vatican council with its strong emphases on theological education open ed, opening education to lay and ordained and uh, the ecumenical um, uh, impulse within within theological studies and with the church uh, in general so that just to just to uh, focus then a welcome to you each of you comes then here to to study with your own story and at your own point in life you might be looking to develop uh, 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 your theological studies for the purpose of a job for the purpose of a vocation you might be exploring priestly religious life uh, lay ministries in one form chaplaincies pastoral work pastoral service whatever it might be so you might be looking for professional and vocational development or you might be coming for personal enrichment uh, to 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 explore your faith to ask some questions to explore some of the some of the questions and doubts that you carry around faith to explore some of the opportunities and challenges facing uh, religious just communities facing the Catholic Church uh, today, whatever that might be, uh, our conviction is that 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 journey is is accompanied by a God and and touched by God in various ways, and that in some way or another, uh, God is involved in in this uh, uh, motivation that has brought you to this place today. You might be uh, very familiar with study. You might be returning to study after a long time. You might be facing humanities type studies, writing essays and footnotes and things for the first time. All of this might be new to you, or it might be old hat. Just just um, we hope that we can provide good resource for wherever you are along that uh, journey and whether it's for professional vocational purposes or for uh, personal enrichment we hope that this this is a satisfying and, and valuable experience that allows you to enhance your understanding of the Christian faith and its traditions theology is faith seeking understanding so there is a rational cognitive dimension about about this this work where we seek to put together faith and reason in the catholic tradition we do that in order to develop skills for ministry and for pastoral care whatever the setting might be whether that's the family the home the school the workplace or some professional ministry setting the aim always is for spiritual engagement whatever whatever the whatever the uh, academic side of our work in in theology and its disciplines there's always a a spiritual component about that there's an encounter with uh, with the with the living lord an encounter with the catholic tradition that's at work within all of that and that all of that works together to make a difference in our world it's 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 we're not here to be an inward looking uh, uh you know self-satisfying group we're here to be of service to the church for the sake of of of, of a gospel inspired difference uh, in in this world so that developing the capacities to live in such a way that we read the signs of the times that we seek to articulate the the, the truth the reality of the gospel and witness to it in the most compelling and comprehensible way uh, in our culture today so uh, with us uh, in 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 the session tonight various various members of the college staff will um, will guide us through various components of this of this gathering um you've already met father simon wade simon's the academic dean in the college and therefore has oversight of all academic uh, programs uh, that the college runs and is our point of contact with the university of divinity's academic services uh, Simon will guide us on to some academic information shortly. Uh, then Annalise Reeves, uh, a member of the Mannix Library uh, staff, will, will join us to uh, share some information about the library itself, one of the great treasures of Catholic Theological College and 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 Melbourne, the Victorian Catholic Church in general, uh, the Mannix Library. So Annalise will introduce us to the library and its services. Our CTC's Learning Support Coordinator, Ms. Jude Caspers, 
uh, will speak to us about um, uh, academic writing and the and the learning management system that none of us can live without in tertiary education anymore. Uh, and also, uh, we have other other members of the team here. I can see Dr. Catherine Plaus, the deputy master. Catherine's a lecturer in in New Testament, as well as working in the in the executive of the college. Jenny Delahunt from the Academic Records Office. Some of you might have come into contact with Jenny previously, and. I'm flicking through my list here. I don't think there are any other staff members with us today. If there are, I apologise uh, for not mentioning you. So um, that might be enough from me. Shall I hand back to you, Simon, to 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 carry on? Thank you very much for that, Kevin. Um, uh, it's uh, we are missing one member today, and that's uh, Paul Sharkey, who's the postgraduate coordinator. Uh, he's on his way to Darwin as we speak, so uh, uh, we'll be keeping him in mind. So I'm going to give you some overview of the academics um, to get you uh, orientated uh, for um, the actual studies and the various aspects of uh, the uh, academic uh, life. Um, after I've done that, I'll share with you something about the um, CDC itself, the physical location, and then we'll hear from Jude Caspers, who uh, will help us with the ARC management system, which is key to your learning here, and some other important information. And, and finally, we'll hear from uh, Annalise Reeves about the library and the treasures that it contains. So with the academic uh, uh, information, as we move on to the next slide, um, <coughs> It's good to remember that uh, your learning is really a journey. Uh, that the um, you might begin uh, with uh, something like a diploma and find that you enjoy it, and then want to add more to it. Or you might sort of start with a, a bachelor. Um, there is many different uh, places in which to start, and so you've chosen your courses and you've uh, started uh, to uh, um, see what the journey that you're going to be on. Um, but you never quite know what's around the corner. Um, sometimes you might find that uh, the timetable comes up and uh, there's a, a new um, unit which uh, is just very um, uh, interesting to you. So uh, we have lots of opportunities. When uh, we sort of uh, do um, enter into the academics, uh, we're guided by the um, uh, what's called the graduate attributes of the university. Um, and these are on the next slide, uh, which uh, tell us sort of basically what the studies are about. They're, they're there for, to help you to learn, of course, uh, to be critically uh, equipped, um, to be able to articulate, to be able to share with others, um, to articulate and share, communicate uh, what you've learned and being able to uh, be uh, competent in that. And then to engage uh, in the world and to serve. Um, that's one thing which is there are many of those graduate attributes which are similar to other universities but the serving one is uh, particularly um, uh, pertinent to the University of Divinity. Our service is a, is a key aspect of uh, what we seek to in, instill in our courses. Um, as we go on to the next slide, the, um, it's important to recognise that uh, the um, courses that we have here are, on the whole are taught degrees which means that um, we do require attendance. Now that might be attendance face to face if you're coming into class at East Melbourne, uh, or it could mean simply logging into the ARC management system, the online management system, uh, to do some learning activity or follow up on some uh, video or, or submit an assignment. Um, so we do ask that uh, if you're unable to be there for one reason or another, whether that's turning up or being able to interact on online with the many management system that you let your lecturer know. Um, I don't know if you're into real estate, but you know in real estate they say it's location, location, location. Well, in studies here it's communication, communication, communication. So uh, uh, that's something to keep in mind that the more you communicate, uh, the more we're able to actually help you. Um, sometimes if people don't communicate, they can get themselves in difficult situations and it gets too far down the track if they don't communicate till later in semester, and then it becomes very difficult to help. If you communicate early, there are many, many uh, avenues by which we are able to assist you if things come up that uh, get in the way of your studies. Uh, the um, <clears throat> You'll be hearing about uh, study skills, as I said, with uh, uh, Jude Caspers, who's a uh, learning uh, support uh, management coordinator, and uh, and he'll uh, help you with that. Um, so I won't dwell on, on this slide here. One thing, though, to uh, recognise is that um, academic integrity is important. What is academic integrity? Uh, it's about basically 
um, producing work for your assessments, uh, which are your work. Um, they're not work uh, that of somebody else. They're not work that you've generated from an artificial intelligence engine. They're not uh, work which you've previously submitted to a, a, a degree elsewhere, um, but they're your work in this unit at this time. So uh, there are various uh, checks and balances that we have in the systems that uh, can ensure that, uh, but it's the key thing about it is that uh, the, uh, the purpose of this is a learning journey and the learning journey requires engagement. And even though sometimes, you know, I, I've had an experience where uh, one student sort of did their first assignment and it wasn't necessarily the best. So I was able to give lots of feedback on it and they took hold of that. And then they did a really excellent final paper. So um, it's uh, it's not a problem to uh, um, to learn uh, to make mistakes. Mistakes are all part of the learning process. Um, the uh, so we can skip the next slide since I've basically uh, done that and then one after that. Um, the um, um, and that's that's what I was, I was saying. Uh, recycling is where you submit your own work a second time. So let's go on to the study guide. Um, the study guide is important. You'll find this in the library hub and uh, Annalise will show you where to find that on the library website. The uh, study guide is particularly important because, uh, uh, sorry, the style guide, uh, because that allows you then to set out your essay in the appropriate fashion with the right footnotes and the right bibliography and how to organize that. Um, if you're if a person that has an eye for detail, you'll find that relatively easy. If you're a person who's more big picture, this will take a, a bit of um, discipline to actually really you know, nut down the uh, those those details, uh, such as you know, is it a book? Is it an article? How do I describe that? How do I set that out in the footnotes? Uh, but all the information is on the style guide, and uh, and that's a, a very very useful thing. And you can always ask your lecturer if you're unsure as well. Um, the next slide um, lets you uh, uh, gives you some information really about uh, what happens when things go wrong. Um, there, things can come up during semester. Um, you might get sick. Uh, you might break a leg. Um, who knows what might happen? Uh, there are all the list is as long as my arm as to all the different things that might happen. So we have the possibility of extensions for your assignments. Uh, there's the lecturer's extension, which can be up to two weeks, uh, and the dean's extension, which is up to four weeks, and uh, the um, and that allows you to uh, uh, still get your assignments in without any penalties for being late uh, because of something that might have come up. So those are very useful things. The, um, if we go to the next slide, uh, there is one further thing beyond that because four weeks is fine for most things, uh, but sometimes uh, something uh, really sort of uh, uh, happens uh, which maybe sort of takes you overseas for a death of a relative or something like that and four weeks is not enough. So we have the possibility of special grading consideration uh, which not only deals with extensions beyond those normal four week time but it also allows for change of assessment type. Um, in case, uh, for instance, uh, um, you're not able to do the normal assessment uh, which might be written, it allows you to possibly do an oral thing as well. Um, the um, now, this is for things which were unexpected during semester. When there are things which are expected, uh, we do something a little differently, which is on the next slide. If uh, you've identified in your enrollment uh, form that uh, uh, you might have some sort of disability or some particular um, need uh, in the particular way in which you studies, then we can supply you with uh, a support plan. And that means that then we look at, uh, together with you, we look at sort of what adjustments might be made to make it such that you can do your study uh, in a way which uh, is suitable and, uh, and makes the necessary adjustments so you can actually carry out your study successfully. Um, so that would require a, uh, a meeting with myself or with the postgraduate coordinator and it would sit down with you and work out sort of what adjustments would actually enable you to uh, uh, be able to uh, you know complete your studies effectively and still meet the learning outcomes. Uh, that's that's important too because uh, we don't just make adjustments uh, um, which are um, arbitrary but we make adjustments that still allow you to meet the learning outcomes of the unit and the course. Um, the, um, this one here, um, always good to note the CTC website. So ctc.edu.au. There is a wealth of information on the website um, and uh, there's lots of uh, 
uh, material there and uh, you can go hunting for, for hours. Uh, one of the most useful things to tell you the truth on the website is the far right of the tabs which talks about the timetables. Uh, it shows you this year's timetable and come sort of September, October, um, you'll see next year's timetable. But uh, now that you're um, coming up to study, uh, one of the other key aspects of information, not just the website, are actually on ARC. With the, uh, there's a unit called CTC Student Resources on ARC, and that has everything. <laughs> everything regarding sort of administration and what I've told you. If you're looking for a lecturer's extension form, you'll find it on CTC Student Resources. If you're looking for a Dean's extension form, you'll find it there. If you're looking for special grading consideration form, you'll find it there. If you're looking for information on uh, uh, ways to study, um, Jude has done a wonderful uh, set of videos which uh, help you through the whole study process and uh, give uh, um, great uh, information about um, academic skills and so forth. So there's a wealth of information on the CTC Student Resources uh, Unit on ARC and I really encourage you to have a look at that and just sort of have a bit of fun looking around it and, uh, and you'll find that uh, that uh, uh, has an endless supply of, of good information. So uh, to finish up uh, this uh, on the uh, academics, uh, just to reiterate, I pray you enjoy your learning journey here and uh, that uh, it is not only a fruitful thing for you uh, developing your skills, uh, not only does it uh, allow you to deepen in your relationship with God, but also uh, you encounter some wonderful people and uh, you have an enjoyable time. We want it to be a time of joy for you and uh, something that you will treasure as you uh, continue on in your life, even beyond CTC. So uh, the next um, set of slides uh, is to look at the actual place. Um, now, a lot of you will be online uh, for your studies, but we also have, of course, the uh, the location at East Melbourne. So uh, I'll get uh, Jenny to bring uh, those slides up. So uh, the uh, if we go to the second slide, there it is there. That's the entrance to the college of uh, Victoria Parade and uh, through the glass sliding doors. And you'll see there on the left, we have the, uh, the old Parade College building. And on the right, we have the newly built section, which was uh, built, um, I think it would have been 1997-8. Uh, I think it opened in 1999, I think when we moved in there. So uh, so that's, uh, that's where the college is. Um, to get there, there are many different ways in which you can get there. You can drive in and find a park, which is not always the easiest around uh, East Melbourne, but the trams, you know, basically go right outside. Uh, the trains from Parliament Station are a very short walk away, or you can catch the tram a couple of stops. And there's the buses, which uh, run all the way along Victoria Parade. So, uh, so there's lots of ways you can get to CDC by public transport. When you come in uh, through those glass doors, you'll see reception and there's uh, V who's uh, uh, there. She'll often be the person that you'll see there at the front desk and she'll welcome you and uh, direct you in whatever uh, location you need to go. You might be seeing somebody, uh, she'll help you with that. Um, or if you're, once you're into your classes and everything, um, you'll see her as you come into your class or go to the library or whatever that might be. Uh, when, you, when you do come in, um, You'll be looking perhaps where your classes classroom is, and uh, I don't. Let me see. Actually, we might go to the next slide. Um, yo, oh, sorry, back one. My mistake. That one there. So what you're looking at there is you're looking across to the old uh, Melbourne, the old uh, Parade College, and there's a notice board on that. Uh, um, building, uh, which is uh, right next to the uh, Knox Theatre uh, entrance, uh, which has uh, a very important uh, uh, list. It has lists of many things, but for you, when you're starting, it has the list of your um, classes and which room they're in. And every room has a designation, which is uh, uh, just near the door so you'll know that you're in the right room and uh, so uh, if you don't know which where the room is uh, then you can go back to V at the reception and she'll direct you to where that room is that you can find your class to begin. 
There's also uh, at uh, CDC in East Melbourne, there's also a student common room uh, where you can relax, uh, have a cup of tea or coffee, and uh, but particularly between um, uh, classes. I mean, we have uh, uh, three hour blocks of classes, but within that, there's normally uh, in different ways, um, half an hour's worth of breaks. Um, in my classes, I tend to do a 20 minute break and then a 10 minute break, but others do it differently. So uh, that is a wonderful opportunity to sit and talk and uh, uh, to be able to just relax a little bit between those hours of classes. When you come into the building, of course, uh, there's, uh, you need to know where the toilets are and they're basically under the stairs on the ground floor and above the stairs on the first floor. Um, so uh, it's, uh, just that sort of simple little corridor where the red arrow is pointing. We have, of course, the chapel. When you go up the stairs, uh, you'll be direct. It'll take you right to the the library. Sorry, <laughs> I was thinking library and I said chapel. Uh, the um, the library, which is there, that's uh, that's where you'll end up going if you follow the stairs up and then go around to the right. And uh, uh, there's uh, all the books there, which uh, is one of the best theological li libraries uh, in Australia. Um, particularly for Catholic material. But then if you uh, instead go left and then follow along the corridor of the, uh, up of the um, uh, Old Parade College and go up a level, you'll end up at the chapel. Um, the chapel is a beautiful old uh, chapel and uh, uh, mass is sometimes celebrated there at lunchtime. So you can find at the uh, uh, reception um, a little notice which will tell you whether mass is being celebrated on that day or not. When you uh, are looking for people, sometimes it can be hard to find them, but if you see that red arrow there, that shows you where the registrar and the academic records office is. Uh, Jenny, who's with us tonight, she works with Turindi in the Academics Records Office, and that's down that corridor. Um, but V can help you if, if you're unsure of exactly where to go. We also have uh, at the, um, the college some lovely places to sit and reflect um, outside and, uh, and also inside. I mean, the, um, uh, in the library, there's uh, some wonderful chairs where you can just sit and read and reflect. And outside, particularly if it's a lovely day, uh, there's a place where you can have lunch and, uh, and just uh, enjoy the outdoors. Uh, there we have it uh, with the flowers in bloom. And periodically, we might have uh, the uh, SRC uh, giving a, um, uh, a barbecue or something like that. So it's a, it's a wonderful um, opportunity to enjoy the environment. Um, now, how are we going for time? I think that's probably enough for me. I, th the, I think that's that'll do for me. And so uh, I'll invite uh, uh, Jude Caspers to uh, take us through the, uh, the wonderful uh, uh, world of study skills and the ARC learning management system. Thank you, Simon. Okay. Uh, just to go through my role, hopefully we're working here. So I look after ARC, which is our learning management system, uh, special needs and academic writing mainly. And first of all, some good news. We've got an academic writing course coming up. So if you think you're needing a hand with academic writing or some study organisation, we run a full five week session every first semester. And in second semester, we have a, a pretty uh, condensed version of one three hour session. But the, as Simon mentioned before, the recordings of semester one are all available for you. So look out for this. this I will endeavor if I have your email addresses, I will be sending this to every one of you tomorrow. Uh, and it talks about the, the when, it, when it's running, if it's online on Thursday, August the 10th. Now I know whatever day I choose, some people will have a lecture on. Last year, this time I thought I'd be smart and try to do it on a Friday. So no one could complain they had a clash, but we had the lowest attendance there. So I'm not gonna do that again. So that experiment failed. So I'll keep it to a Thursday night and uh, I know it won't suit everyone, but uh, for, for those who can, it will be available on recording as well. Now uh, make sure that you register. The closing date is uh, Monday, um, Monday week. The, it is running in week two. Okay, on Thursday week two, and you just need to register and then we will see you. And uh, we're focusing this mainly on the art of essay planning since that's the main um, 
uh, worry component that people have. And some of you may uh, have uh, done tertiary before, but some of you may have never done it before, or perhaps it's been a long time. So it's good to go through what is required in a on a tertiary level uh, for the art of uh, essay planning and writing. Now, do you qualify for a learning support plan? I think uh, Simon covered that pretty well. So uh, I assist the two deans with, with that uh, support that we can give uh, students. So that's just a student support plan. But uh, you, if you haven't already and you know you've got some sort of um, condition that may impact your studies and you didn't uh, tick that box on your enrollment form, uh, please uh, let us know and we can uh, provide some support for you. Uh, other support? Uh, we have peer liaison officers. Uh, Josh is one of our, our students, Josh McDermott and BN. And we also have two staff members on this uh, team of peer liaison officers, Lisa from the library. Most of you get to know her very, very well and myself. So um, we have, or we will be uh, trained by the Human Rights Commission on uh, areas to support. Uh, it's called the contact officers course. So a lot of uh, different organizations send uh, key people to uh, the Human Rights Commission for this uh, PD. And we cover things like how to deal with harassment, discrimination and grievances. So uh, we're there to support you if ever that, that does happen. And uh, just before I go on that, their, their email addresses are on the notice board that Simon referred, referred to as well. And that's all kept very confidential. So what is Paradigm? There's a few things I need to introduce you to. Uh, paradigm is uh, the place where Jenny and Turindi enter your enrollment procedures. And you'll, met, you'll hear us talking about Paradigm a few times. So it's really uh, housed on, on uh, the University of, of Divinity with the um, Office of the Vice Chancellor. And all your enrollment details are, are kept there. And it's good for you to be able to check that. So it's a site where you can uh, view your enrollment details anytime. You can access your results. So when our registrar will let you know that the results are due, you can go into Paradigm and have a look at that. The good news is that uh, the login is the same for ARC, the Library Hub, which uh, Annalise will talk about, and Paradigm. So you only have to remember one password, which I'll explore with you very soon. That's how a Paradigm looks like. Fictitious person there. But uh, if you go in, you can see, we like all our students to, uh, to do well, this particular student did very well. You can you can see can they're enrolled. Yes, I've just had a chat from a student saying that they can't see you. They can't, they can't see, see what me. you're presenting. They can't see the shared screen. Yeah. Ah, that's. Um, can you have a go, Jim? What you did before? It's something about that focus. Key, it's showing up okay for me for what that's worth. Oh, thank you. That's one of the students, That's, is that, that right? That was, no, that was Catherine. Oh, mm. right. Uh, could I have one of the students there? It looks like our colleagues can see it. Oh, hang on, mate, co-host. Uh, I think- uh, They can now see your application. I've got to sign this in, they can now see the application. So one of the students, oh, I can see someone there. Would anyone like to just let us know that you can yep, see Yep, yep, they can see it. Fantastic, see thank, it. You. thank you. Thank you. Okay. Apologies for that. Um, technology always can uh, play a part in interfering. So um, I'll just reiterate what Paradigm is about. It's where you can see your enrollment. So there's uh, a student and you can see the enrollment details there. You can see what they have completed. And when the results are due, you can actually see, we like all our students get high distinctions. Uh, so you can uh, see your grade there. And remember, you can email any of us if you have any questions about what we're presenting today. So ARC is something very important, as uh, my uh, esteemed leaders mentioned before. It's uh, ARC is our online learning management system, uh, LMS, some universities call it. We call it ARC because we are Christians and we think the ARC is a great place where we can all be housed and we all float along. So it doesn't actually stand for anything, we just call it ARC. And like a big friendly boat, we're all there together. Uh, and we welcome you aboard. But uh, sometimes it does get a bit rocky, so we will let you know about that. Uh, but the question is, will you be keeping your head above water? Because there's a few things to familiarize yourself if you're new to ARC. And I'll go through these now, but I'm sending you all uh, a guide, an ARC guide, comprehensive ARC guide uh, tomorrow. 
and you will be able to look at that and go through all the things I've been talking about. But this is really uh, a way for you to um, familiarize yourself with it. And just to be aware that we ask you to start exploring now. We've got a few days for some of you before you start. The, the more familiar you are with ARC, as early as possible, the better it is for you. So this is some essential knowledge to keep you afloat on the ARC. And there's the ARC guide that will be coming to you tomorrow. There also are some, uh, quite a few actually, uh, hard copy uh, copies available in the book stand in the foyer and if you run we run out uh, please let me know I'll, I'll run up some more but you'll be getting a soft copy tomorrow so arc is the as i said the online learning management system and for each unit you are enrolled you normally have two corresponding web pages this is a little bit confusing if you're getting used to there's two corresponding web pages for each unit you are enrolled um, the reason for that is because we are a dynamic university we have unlike other universities where you may have all first years in one class and and say third years and, and postgraduates in uh, separate classes we combine our classes but they do different levels of assessment. So uh, the reason why we have two web pages is that we, um, everyone sees the meta unit, which I'll talk about, uh, which has all the resources, but then each student has, or each level in that class has their own web page for the assessments. And it'll make, become more clear to you as we go on. So uh, in ARC, uh, when you go in, you can see all your units and you'll see readings, lectures, video links, and other resources that lectures provide for you. Plus, there's also portals through which your assignments are lodged online. So you lodge your assignments online through ARC as well. And these are then run through the Turnitin database for a similarity check. The university has to keep its obligations up with uh, TEXTA, the overriding government uh, authority. So we have to have uh, a similarity checker that we can uh, just make sure that um, plagiarism, that uh, Simon alluded to, is, uh, is, is not, not uh, possible. So there's a turn it in sign. You can see this icon here, and that always tells you that there's an assessment link. Okay. Now I just want to go through assessing ARC. So it's very important. There's the ARC website. You, need, you should only really need to look at that once. That's in the booklet. And we ask you to bookmark that as soon as possible. So you don't have to keep looking uh, at that. And just press, for those who don't know, you just press the start at the end of that, and you'll get a nice little uh, symbol on your shortcut there, and that would be your, your home base whenever you go into ARC automatically. That's your login screen, what it looks like. Now, your username is the email address you gave us uh, upon enrollment, okay? That's your, your, it's your username now, and always use lowercase. Even if your normal email address that you use ha may have uppercase, for the purposes of your username, it must always be in lowercase, otherwise ARC will not accept it. Your password is automatically uh, generated by the system and it's your day and month of birth in that format, plus the last three digits of your University of Divinity student ID that uh, the Academics Records Office would have sent you. If you haven't got that yet, just an email to one of us and we can, we can fill you in on that. So an example, if your date of birth is the 1st of the 12th, 1995, and your student number is that. Your password would be 01 forward slash 12 for December. Notice there's no more forward slashes, only one, and then 543 being the last three digits of your password. Okay, again, that's explained in the booklet, but that's your password, and you're welcome to change that if you wish. But remember the forward slash. Some people try the backslash, some people try two slashes, and it won't work. Okay, so very important you remember that forward slash just between the day and the month. And when you get onto ARC the first time, there's a tour that will take you through uh, a lot of things I'm showing you now. So I encourage you to do that as well as a, as a recap. Very important, we have Noah there in ARC. Uh, where do I go if I lose my way? Look for the dashboard, that's that's home base. Okay, so if ever you get lost, you're not sure where you are, click the dashboard and it'll take you back. The other important thing, you can see these big banners here, Annalise will tell you how to get onto the library resources um, direct, but there's you can also get onto uh, the library hub uh, through ARC. Okay, once you log into ARC, you can just click that and it takes you straight through. Another important thing is the unit overview. So it tells you where all your units are. 
show you a closer view to that. This is a very small icon, but it's vitally important. I wish they made it bigger. It's called the filter icon, and that uh, directs you to see your units. And it, for if you're if it's your first time with us, as most of you would be, it's probably not such an important thing. But when you've been here for a few years, you'll have lots of units there as a, as a record of what you've been studying. So the filter icon is a good thing to uh, find your unit very, uh, very quickly. Now, you've got a choice of filters to use. There's all, in progress, future, and past. Now, they were really good when uh, ArcFest started and we, uh, we weren't so big as university with so many units we've got in our bank. What's happened, and we've also got the starred filter, but I've been advised that we really don't recommend you use these anymore. The reason being some of the date settings are, are not as consistent as we'd like them to be. So if you are going for in progress, for instance, one of your current units may uh, not be set to the correct date uh, and it may be hidden from you. And then students let me know that with a big panic, I can't find my unit, I'm not enrolled. Okay? And same thing with future or past. So um, it's much better if you use the all filter or the starred filter. Okay, don't worry if you forget that, I'll remind you. Um, this is what the all filter would look like. You can see the units there mentioned. You can choose, notice here you can choose, we can have a, a card, this is the card view, a list view or a summary view. And this is the all filter as I said before. And what I would recommend you do is when you go into all, go to those three dots behind each of your units and if you click that, it lets you know that you have starred this course, which means it makes it much easier. It's like a favorites file, that's what starred is. And then you can actually find them as well in the starred folder or the starred filter. And that means your, it's really where your favorites are. So there's a view of the starred filter there. And you can see these units have been starred, which are the current units that this student is doing. As I mentioned before, there are two websites for each unit. So here's an example. Uh, each a uh, unit is in the format of what we call a meta unit, or, what we call, or another word for that is a parent unit. It's got no code. Notice it's just the name of the unit with the word meta, meaning all encompassing. Okay. A good way to remember that is mother is a parent, so a meta unit. Okay. Uh, you can get confusing when you're, when you're new. So the meta unit is the mother or parent unit, okay, which means all students in the class can access that and that's where the lecturer puts all your resources in. The other uh, version of your unit is what we call the child unit. And child such so as C and so does the word code. So if it's got a code to it, it's a child unit, okay. And you can see, we'll talk about what these codes mean in a moment, but if it's got a code, it's the child unit. Here's an example now. Parent and meta units, so you can see they often don't come one after the other. Being followers of Christ, the unit I'm focusing on here. And the child unit appears there. We know it's a child unit, it's got the code. Now, I'll just give you some explanation. The CT stands for the field of study that your, your, this particular unit falls into. The first number is the level. So level nines or eights are postgraduate students. So uh, there's a different sort of assessment that you'll be doing than say the undergraduates, which may have a one, two, or three. C stands for CTC. Sometimes uh, our students can choose units from any college in the university if it's appropriate with your dean. So uh, C means it's a CTC unit. And that's just the year, 2023 and two meaning February for our units that started in February, most of you will have units with a seven at the end or, or an eight if it's what we call an intensive where it's starting a bit later. Okay, so that just uh, lets you know the month that your unit is starting. This is an example of what a meta unit could look like. You can see lots of resources that different lecturers choose to put on and they're as unique as our lecturers that they are individuals as well and uh, you can see there's one here with a voice uh, a podcast looks like something different each of these are links to particular resources and this unit is split up into different weeks now here's another meta unit maps and these are all readings that you can click and, and access. Notice I've highlighted this here. 
this jigsaw puzzle piece is the, the link you go to for your online classes. Really important that you find that. The green jigsaw puzzle link is the link where you go to your online classes. And you just click the, that and it takes you to a whole list of classes. And you just click that particular day. This is the child unit. And you can see because it's got the code. And it's got something here called announcements where lectures will post news, uh, different items there for you to read. You'll also get an email on that. But you can always backtrack and see what that announcement was by going to your unit. Remember I mentioned the turn it in icon. So these are assessments. This is where you click that and that's where you would lodge your assignments. And the unit guide is particularly important. And the unit guide is found in the child unit. I'll just take you through the unit guide. Very important you look at that. So unit guide, I'll just go back. That's how it's presented. And if you go further down, it'll tell you lots of information detail, like your, your academic in charge of the course, the unit content, learning outcomes. And there's learning outcomes and you can see the graduate attributes that have been ticked that Simon referred to. So these uh, these particular learning outcomes will be covered, this unit. You can see the, the assignments are, and the assessment are, are detailed. Very important here as well, which is the recommended resources or, or bibliography that the lecturers have uh, recommended for that particular unit. And, and I know analysts will talk about how we access those in an easy way at the Library Hub. We'll go back to the child unit now. There's some other important information I just want you to see. Assessment task, we talked about that before. If we click that and we go into that, as I said, as I mentioned before, we go into turn it in, which is a, a similarity checker. And this is a lecturer's view of the assignments that are coming in. Uh, nothing to worry about too much. It's just that it tells you the, tells the lecture the date and the time it's been uh, entered. Uh, if it's read, it means it's gone past that particular due date, but um, they may have had extensions or it's, we have a one day rule as well, that if it goes past one day, that's, we don't uh, worry about that. Assignments, are, so that's the, the date assignments have been uh, submitted. What I want to show you is the similarity score. So um, as soon as you lodge your assignment in, you have a gray box. And after about 15 minutes, after it gets checked on the World Wide Web, you can come back to it and you'll see a color bar and a percentage. And that's your similarity score. And you can see different students have different ratings there. So we like to look at cool colors, the blues and the greens, we really like to see because they have the lower numbers. Sometimes they get a bit warmer, yellow, sometimes we see red. Okay, but um, please be aware this is a guide only, and we don't, lots of the most common question I get while I've been working at CTC is what's the, the number I need to aim for? There is no number, it really depends on your particular unit. If you're doing a unit such as Canon Law, where everyone is quoting the same resource, more or less, uh, it will naturally be very high because everyone is, is going to that. And uh, our, uh, turn it in, I'm going to let you know, is overly sensitive. So sometimes it'll pick up the lecturer's name if they've been uh, very, um, what's the word, published lots of papers, so their, their name is on the internet, their name will come up each time and that'll affect your similarity score. Sometimes the name of the unit will come up. So it's a guide only. The most important thing to do is when you lodge it, and it's really good to lodge it before the due date and the due time, then you go in, click that, and you can have a look and you can analyze what actually has been picked up as similar. And lecturers know that, so they don't uh, really worry too much. They just look to see as a as a as a, um, a guide, and then they go in and they analyze it. So you can see here, this is the scores that the students got. The scores themselves have no reflection on these similarities. Okay. It's another example of the dashboard. I want to show you, Simon mentioned the CTC student resource, which we're very proud of. And that's a, a non-stop shop for all uh, you really need to look at um, in terms of resources that are there. 
and this is a view of the of CTC student resources. Uh, and first of all, what we call in every unit is a banner section, this blue banner here. You can see we've got practice portals for you to practice lodging your assignments. So you can play around with that. You can do it tonight if you like, you can write a letter to your mum and lodge that in. No one else will see it, and it'll give you a similarity score. Uh, perhaps the word mum might come up a few times. Okay, so that's our practice portal. We have three portals there because um, you can only submit once in each portal for each 24 hour period. So that's why we give you uh, give you three. Lots of other important information. If you need instructions on how to upload, uh, how to review similarity items in my turn in the assignment, some really good resources there. I may say so myself. Um, the ARC student guide is there. You have an up to date one there. We mentioned before the star guide. So there's the star guide. It takes you to a direct link to the star guide on the University of Divinity Library page. And that will tell you how to actually you, uh, reference your work. There's even an online practice link for an onli online class. You can play around with. If you go further down on the CTC student resources, you'll see academic forms. And all these resources are there for you lectures extension form, etc. You just click those and they're there for you to use. If you go to the next section, number three, academic resources. This is a snapshot taken a little while ago, so it'll be it's always updated. And then my academic writing course. So if you want to, uh, I'll give you a snapshot of the semester one academic writing course uh, when we meet and week two, but there's a more comprehensive one with all the resources are there for you to look at and to use. There are five library resources. And this orientation session will also be recorded and be placed there. And other important items. So I want to close now just to finish off by saying, uh, when can I get onto ARC? And each unit goes live to students seven days prior to your first class. So if your class is on Wednesday next week, it'll be available tomorrow for you. If it's Monday or Tuesday, your timetable, it'll already be there. So you can have a look tonight. And just to finish off, where can I get help if I need it? If I find I can't log into ARC, uh, email me straight away. Copy that if you like. It'll be on the uh, guide you'll be getting uh, tomorrow. But also, this is where I am. This is the map of what uh, some had showed you before. There's the registrar's office, the register reception, and I am there. So straight ahead, learning support coordinator. And if I'm not available, my next door neighbor, Dr. Chris Morris, will use us here in this office here, the next door. So we're there to, su to support you and to help you, um, especially with ARC. Please don't uh, hesitate to email me directly if you have any issues. Thank you, everyone. I'll stop. Any quick questions which pertains to anything? Okay. Feel free to email me later on if you like. Okay. And I'll hand you back to Simon. Great. Thank you very much for that, uh, Jude. Uh, a comprehensive walk through uh, all those. Uh, Great uh, learning supports and uh, and that uh, key critical piece of uh, knowledge about ARC. So thank you very much. Now I'd like to invite Annalise, uh, who will share with us uh, the beauty and the wonder of the library. Thank you. I'll just share my screen now. Yes. Okay, dokey. Can everyone see my screen? Okay. No. Let me just. Um, Let's hope so. <laughs> Isn't it always fun? It's always different every time. <laughs> oh, where are we? How are we looking? Everyone can see oh, me? I, okay? I, yeah, I've got someone who said yes, I can see you. Perfect. Wonderful. And your, your screen. Lovely, thanks. All right, so um, as Father Simon said, my name is Annalise and I am one of the librarians um, upstairs at Mannix Library. And I'm just going to give you a very, very brief introduction to the Mannix Library and the Library Hub because they're going to be some very good friends of yours um, during your time at CTC. So um, we are located upstairs um, just through those doors. 
And you can find our hours at our website, which is manix.org.au. And we're normally open Monday to Friday, definitely nine till five. Um, but when there's some night classes on, which I believe is Tuesday, Thursday and Friday this semester. No, I'm wrong. I got that wrong. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. My bad. So the tongue. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday will be open um, nine till seven. So if you need to come in late for any reason as well, you're um, welcome to come into the library up until seven o'clock. So there's that. Um, you're able to borrow up to 25 books. Uh, if you're just a coursework undergrad student, you can borrow them for three weeks. And if you're a research student, up to 10 weeks, which is a very generous amount of time. Um, we have return shoots for those books uh, just outside the library doors. So if we're closed, or whatever, or the building would be open. Right? But we have a little return shoot just outside the door. And we also have a return shoot at the front desk. So you can pop them in there. Um, as well. Um, we have computers and Wi-Fi available, so we and we have photocopiers and printers. If you're wanting to do any printing or photocopying, we have a five dollar car printing card that you can purchase from us at the front desk and then you can copy away as much as you'd so please. Um, if you need to look up the hours, if, if sort of you want to sort of just check if there's a public holiday coming up and you want to see if we're open or something or other um, the hours are listed on our website up there on the in the white bar and if you want to find out any information about Mannix Library um, there's this guide button here and it'll give you a bit of information who works there if you want to see what my degree is um, and just a few little fun things about the library. Um, you can do a search through the catalogue here as well which is great but before I'll, before I do that, I'll take you to this next one, which is the Library Hub. And the Library Hub is where you'll go um, for most of your uh, library needs. So if you click through that, that will take you to the Library Hub, which is, yes, one of your best friends for study. Um, so that's library.divinity.edu.au. And as you can see up here in the red bar, um, there's a few links here that will be useful to you, which I'll go through with some of them um, in a second. But um, as I said, this is a very brief introduction to the library. So there'll be an actual library orientation happening on the Thursday, August 10th, just like Jude's. But we're doing ours at lunchtime, so it shouldn't clash, which is good. Uh, but I'll get back to that later. So if you're wanting to find out a bit of information about the library, obviously we have the about um, information here um, but the main thing for the library you want to search the catalog so you can find books so the library hub functions as the online um, catalog and um, online resources for um, all your study needs so we have tools and information there for you so if you're wanting to do a search big search bar is here in the middle of the of the screen and as you can see I've already popped a title of a book in that I'm wanting to look up. So once you pop in your search term, just hit search and you'll be taken to the library catalogue. So it'll show you all the results. And if you are um, if you can see this orange circle on the side here, um, these are the filters that you'll want to pay attention to when you're conducting a search. Um, if you're coming into the library, so you're wanting to borrow a physical book, you can always Tick on the Mannix library um, function, and then you can also down here under format tick on book, and that will show you all the books that we have at Mannix library. Um, if you're if you're uh, an online student, or you're just sort of staying at home for the day, if you click on University of Divinity Libraries, and then down here, which is cut out of the screen, um, ebook, um, that will show you all the ebooks that are available uh, on the library hub that are available to you. Now, you'll see here um, that this is where it's available. So if there's a green tick, print book is available here at Mannix in the main collection. And here's the call number here, just underneath um, the location. Um, and if there's an ebook available, you'll see a big 
a big view ebook button. If that view ebook button is not present, then it's not available as an ebook, um, unfortunately. But we're trying to get we're trying to get a good selection of ebooks in so that everyone can have access um, to all the titles that we have. Uh, let's see. Now, as Jude said before, your ARC details are the same as your Library Hub login. So you'll come up once you've clicked an ebook, you'll be automatically prompted to this page here. Um, which will ask you to put in your username, which is your email, all in lowercase, and um, the password that you use for ARC and Paradigm. Uh, next. Ah, yes, next. We have course reserves, and this is a very, very useful tool. So up here in this dark grey bar, you'll see course reserves. Um, course reserves is a very handy function because it will give you um, a list of all the units being offered um, during the semester and when you find your unit that you're looking for um, it will give you a list of all the books that have been put aside on reserve for your unit so all the resources that you'll need to to see um, if you're coming into the library to physically borrow books they will be on the back wall behind the big study table to, to your right um, and all those books they stay in the library but you're obviously welcome to you know, photocopy any pages that you need or read them in the library. Um, but normally we'll have a second copy or an ebook um, version of that available so that everyone has um, access. So this course reserve link is really handy because it lists all the books that you need and it can take you straight to the ebook link if you um, need to do that. And again, if you click the ebook link, you'll be automatically prompted to log in to the library hub with your ARC details. Uh, as well. Uh, okay, so back to the Library Hub homepage. If I have spoken too fast, because I tend to ramble a little bit when I'm talking, um, you'll find all the information you need under the under the guides button. Um, there's a there's a selection of guides, subject guides and whatnot, but the main one here is the Library Hub guide, and that is your um, your go-to. It's the library it's the library um, how-tos and FAQs and just the help, the help if um, you don't feel like talking to me or one of us. Um, so all of your questions should be answered here, hopefully. We've tried to put as many questions as we can in the FAQs. Um, there's video guides here. There's guides on how to search, uh, do particular searches for articles or eBooks, um, how to use databases, um, so, and there's a little orientation link here as well. So, um, it's a bit more in depth if, if you feel like you want to do a walkthrough of the library hub. Um, yeah, so definitely have a, have a play around in this just so that you get an idea. And if you get stuck logging in at any point, there's a, a logging in, um, help page here as well for the library hub. Uh, the next thing, the next best friend of yours, the style guide, as Father Simon mentioned, um that is also listed under the guides and um it will be you'll be referring to it pretty often i'd imagine while you're studying and uh, so uh there's a a link with examples and rules to each of the different um types of items that you'll be using um, and references that you'll be doing so again explore that it'll be good to familiarize yourself with that one um, and yeah, because I said it was a very, very brief introduction to the library, I think that's all from me. We'll be running a library hub orientation session 1 p.m. Um, Thursday the 10th, um, and that will give you a more in-depth um, understanding of the library. Hugh will go into that, my colleague, he'll go into that um, in a lot more detail, and it will be recorded, so if you can't make it, um, everyone who registers will get sent that link. Um, but you'll be able, we'll send an email out in the next couple of days, so you'll get all the information on that and a few more extras and bits and bobs that might be useful to you. And I think that's about it from me. Just, yeah, have a play around, click around the Library Hub. It's safe. <laughs> it's safe in there. So you can absolutely click on things. And, um, yeah, if you get lost, we're just a phone call, email, or away, or just come in and, and see us. So, yeah. Happy, happy studies. I'll hand you back.
Thank you very much, Annalise, uh, for giving us that whirlwind tour of the library. <laughs> Um, so that brings us to the end of our presentations, uh, but uh, there might be some questions uh, that uh, you have, uh, any particular questions we might be able to answer here. Of course, we're always available uh, throughout the semester for questions, but perhaps there are some questions that uh, come to mind now. Um, if there are, feel free to, uh, to ask them.